what's interesting, you talked about um, the collateral impact, essentially, of cryptocurrencies. And when you look at the impact it's having already on the economy right now, what, what would you say in terms of, um, do you feel it's having a negative impact? Do you feel that it's just adding to the volatility with regard to exchange rates or just in general about the U.S. economy? Is the cryptocurrency rate? Right? Yeah, I mean, do you, when you when you look at oh, what kind of impact? yeah, what kind of do you feel having any collateral impact right now on the U.S. economy? Because we're certainly seeing it become more popular. Well, one of my first slides said, uh, "What's happening is you're facilitating trades that would otherwise not occur." Mm -hmm. Theoretical perspective says, "Beautiful, great thing." And some some of those trades are illegal, but I mean something like that. But you also might be just avoiding costs. There might be costly systems out there like uh, uh, international money transfer systems. You might be uh, finding cheaper ways to do that. That's just a better mousetrap. So that kind of thing is better. I would think. You know, one of the things that's interesting is that when we look at sort of the global, um, how do you feel the central bankers are dealing with these issues in other countries? You know, when you look at just, you know, there's certainly been a lot of enthusiasm in Europe, for example, I think, for the crypto assets. When you talk to your colleagues, uh, um, the central banks around the world are all interested in watching uh, the technological developments that are going on by people in the room and, uh, you know, one thing about smaller central banks is that they can sometimes be laboratories for experiments and they might try things. They might have circumstances that are special for that particular country where they can quick and get a better solution. So uh, I think they're very interested. It's, um, you know, one of the things in general is that there's been a lot of that, you know, that it would render parts of the banking system obsolete. Do you think that's the case? When you look at blockchain in general, how would that change the status quo around? you know, central banking, how you issue currency, et cetera? Uh, I think the fundamental problems of currency would remain no matter how you do it, whether you do it through technological channels or through the, the way you do it today. So I think the fundamentals are the fundamentals. And um, yeah. that. So I've got to um, hold this up because this is one of the big memes of uh, the past year. Did you see this when Ned? You know, Chairman Yellen was giving her presentation um, live. What was the reaction, just generally within your office? You know, did you guys joke about this? Was it the huh? buy Bitcoin? If you can't see it, the, we did not joke about that. You did. What were you? Uh, uh, what, what was your reaction? <laughs> what was your reaction? Um, was, look, the dollar is a huge currency which controls a lot of the transactions in world worldwide. I showed you ideas that said why you might not want to trust governments uh, to run the currency system. However, I think the dollar has been run quite well based on the inflation rates that we've gotten out of the, out of the system. I think you know, if you look at when Hayek was writing, in the, just in the U.S., but all, all of them, and he was reacting to this kind of idea that the fiat currency systems were, were um, Bringing out of control or, or kind of blowing up. Mm -hmm. He was reacting to that and he was saying maybe we could do a private uh, currency system. But that is what, after that, you had the vote for uh, uh, stabilization, and since then, you've had low and stable inflation in the major economies, not counting uh, Venezuela or Zimbabwe, but in certainly in Europe and the US and Japan, you've had low, inflation, low and stable inflation. So the lessons have been learned, I think, by the central banks. That's going to make them very difficult to beat at that game uh, going forward, and it is a competitive game. Well, one of the things that I took away from your presentation is that there is a constant state of innovation in, uh, with regard to currency and how we exchange value with each other. When you look at just the technologies that we now have available, what impact do you think it will have, maybe not the U.S. dollar, but in general, around how we exchange value with each other? Because the status, the euro, for example, the status quo didn't work during the European crisis when you had this disconnect between, you know, fiscal policy and monetary policy. Where do you see the role? What do you see innovating? Where do you see just blockchain, but in general, new technologies around shifting how we no, perceive? I, there's currency. tremendous potential for applications of, of blockchain-related technologies. 
to do so many things that would be, uh, I think, major improvements in the economy. So I'm not, I'm just, I'm talking, everything I'm talking Green about, fans, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, everything I'm talking about is specific to the issue of currencies and what people have said historically about these currency issues. And, and so there, I think, you've got this kind of special problem of who's going to issue the currency and what are those promises about future issuance and can you really maintain the credibility of those promises if you can't the value of your currency is going to go to zero the same way that venezuelan bolivar has is the only credible source really for a currency the central bank is that really the only um or the government in question is the only sort of backstop you think for any I, currency going forward? Historically, it's been true. This century, in the past century, it's been true. Is it always going to be that way? I don't know. Uh, maybe there are technological solutions. You know, what we'd really like to do is be able to trade uh, on a barter system. Barter's been like really maligned in the in the monetary theory literature because it's just totally crazy. I got to trade one cow for three car, right. three a car or something like that, and then. Uh, that would never work, right? So, um, but now maybe you could keep track of things and then trade them around in that way. So there are, you know, the, it's possible that there's some something out there that would solve the problem of exchange in a tech, with a technological uh, solution. We haven't found that historically, but it's possible we could find that going forward. So this is an audience of innovators who are working in the space, you know, um, with regards to blockchain, you know, cryptocurrencies, et cetera. What message do you have for them who may or may not have invested in cryptocurrencies? Is it essentially just a cautionary warning? Um, I mean, I think a lot of people, when you hear 1,800 currencies, people assume 80% plus of those are, you know, going to go away or perhaps are not good investments. But there's also a lot of enthusiasm for, you know, the ones that are, in fact, becoming more common, Ethereum, Ripple, Bitcoin, et cetera. What message do you have? Is it to essentially pull back, be careful where you tread? I guess my message is that it's a world of currency competition. You have, even among nation states, you have lots of currencies uh, and that's, they seem to survive. So they're all part of an equilibrium. They're used locally. Not everybody uses the dollar all around the world, uh, the, the, and you could argue that's because nation states are involved in, in the local uh, uh, economies. But uh, I think you have to think in terms of it's going to be competitive and multiple currencies are going to be trading around, and you're going to have this problem of exchange rates between the various uh, currencies. So um, th I wanted to point this out because I said unwittingly there is no company that's trying to solve that problem. The companies are trying to solve, uh, you know, problems of issuing the currency in, in the first place. They're not. They're not uh, taking into account the fact that there are also many other currencies out there. When you think about the role of central bankers in this space, is it really to observe and comment, or do you feel there's a more active role that the Fed could be taking with regard to Bitcoin or any of the other? crypto assets. The drift to a non-uniform currency could become a serious issue for the U.S. if cryptocurrency takes up a large volume of trade. So you could imagine going into the store, uh, maybe you, and now you have 10 different ways or 100 different ways that you can pay. And you're, you're contemplating in your head, you know, should I pay with one cryptocurrency or another cryptocurrency or another cryptocurrency or a dollar? Um, that is exactly what people have not liked historically. That's the, the non-uniform currency mm -hmm. aspect that people have not liked. You buy and a burger with a Bitcoin and then discover... And, hey, it's and worth do I have bucks. to hold do I have to hold some of each type of currency in order to make different types of uh, trades? People have not liked that. And then what if, uh, what if one of the currencies blows up on me and now that one's worth zero, so now part of my wealth has gone away? So um, people have not liked that kind of thing, and they want a uniform thing, a dollar is a dollar. The economists looking at that have said, what we want is to not get ideas about value mixed up with nominal ideas about which currency we're using. We want people to really make judgments about what's really worth, how much is that really worth, and how much am I really willing to pay for it and make the exchange. So you so, want to get that focus. So and we have not much time left, but what do you make of the popularity, the current popularity of um, you know, cryptocurrencies? Is it simply because the technology is there and if you build it, they will come? Or 
or it's, is it are we in a wild west sort of situation? Part of the subtext, subtext of my talk is how great the monetary theory literature has been. Mm -hmm. It predicted uh, things like uh, the coexistence of the currencies. It predicted uh, uh, that there would be a lot of issuance of private uh, money if you allowed that uh, kind of thing to occur. And so there have been a lot of the predictions, and, and it also predicted uh, exchange rate volatility, so there have been a lot of predictions that have come out. History repeats itself. Yeah, I guess. Great. Yeah. Well, please join me in thanking uh, President Bullard. Thank for you. this conversation. A huge thank you to all of our speakers this morning. We are going to be taking a short break, so all sessions will begin back at 11 o'clock. We are now starting concurrent tracks, so make sure you check out your program to find out where the speakers you want to see will be. We'll be closing this door over, so some of the uh, presentations will be in the next room. There are other rooms as well. So starting up again at 11, go and enjoy some coffee and snacks, and we'll see you back here. Thanks so much.